living rent-free in the city. In the city. And you don't have to pay rent. Yes. Now, a lot of us nomads or soon-to-be nomads, we don't want to go out in the wild. <laughs> we don't want to go out on BLM land where there's no amenities and then we have to drive into town to get our stuff. Oy vey. Yeah. <clears throat> and if you're in Arizona, you're not going to find much shade. There's not a lot of trees. But, you know, living rent-free in the city. Why not? Okay? Why not? Mm. A really good friend. I know you can remember him. His, um, it's Jack Moore. And he's back in the States. He had previously sold his vehicle and working here and there. And he, one of the most resourceful men I've ever met. Hey, Jack. Well, he's back um, in the States. He was gone for the summer or the winter. And within two days, He's got his minivan. He's going to go minivan this time. Paid cash. He knows he doesn't want to pay rent. He's done this before. He knows the benefits of it. He knows the joy of this life. And he's ready to go again. He does have a YouTube channel, um, Travels with Jack. And, you know, he may get that going again. Who knows? So um, I'll let you know about that. But he's a very good friend. <clears throat> and... He's always been such a good help to me. So yeah, he's and within <laughs> within two days of being back, literally, he has his minivan. Now, right now, what he's going to be doing is thinking about window coverings, um, where he where he wants everything where what <laughs> where he wants everything to go. Yeah, let me get them lips going. Yeah, okay. <laughs> You know, you should do that because it's a good um, uh, uh, lip exercise. <sighs> you know, as we get older, let me give you a clue. Side note, side note. W what happens is, is this area right here, it starts falling and it gets stretched out right here. And so that's when older people, and you can tell somebody's age of whether they're, how their lips are. Do they still have lips. <laughs> you know, I noticed mine, I used to have really fat uh, upper lip and I've noticed as I'm getting older, this is starting to kind of droop. It just does. So what happens is, is you lose your lip. Now, if I would just bring the up just a little bit, <laughs> I know this is funny, isn't it? Guys, gals. Yeah. Um, if you bring this up just a little bit, what they do when they do a facelift is they do right here, they cut it. And they lift it up and then sew it so you don't see it very well. But they, what it does, lifts the lips up. So that's why I told you about this. What it does is it exercises the lip to bring it more taut. Okay. Everybody do it. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> and if you can't do it, just keep practicing because you will do it. At first, it was like hard to do. Now I can do it. Okay. Okay. Side note. Yeah. Well, let me get my, yeah, I want to get my lips going here. But so he's got all these things to think about the flooring. Now, if he takes the seats out, you see, it's, that means then there's wells because his seats fold, his even second row seats fold down, he said. So does he want to use that space to store stuff? But if he does, then he's got to put a board across to level everything out. These are things that he has to think about. But guess what? He's willing to do it because he knows he wants to get back on the road. I mean, he's interested in Alaska. He's, he's a traveler. So he would be perfect for that. Um, you hear me, Jack? That would You would be perfect for that um, YouTube channel to get that going again because you love to go everywhere. So, yeah. So, but he also knows, he also knows that he likes a city life and he's done it many times. He just stays in the city. And when he did have, before he got rid of his uh, last vehicle, I mean, and I'll leave the link for his, um, his previous, it was like two, three years ago. It was three years ago, but still it's Jack. And you can see what, what, how he had his other 
vehicle set up. But yeah, he knows how to do the city. A lot of us gals, we don't want to go out into the wild. We want to be in the city where there's grocery stores, there's restaurants, there's movie theaters, there's um, just parks. That we can still get nature even though we're in the city. Oops, and I made you coffee, okay? I made you coffee here, yeah. Cheers. It's a fun day today. It's early in the morning and I just got myself cleaned up and I'm gonna go start my day. <clears throat> just a little update, yeah. When I do a lot of walking, I don't do so well. I was at the park yesterday and I kind of walked around a little bit. I, I made it around the ponds <laughs> and then I had to sit down by the one pond and I sat there for just a little while, catch my breath. Uh, springtime in Tucson is gorgeous. I don't care what anybody says. Oh, there's no seasons in the desert. Uh, yeah, this is the Sonoran Desert, and it's a little bit different than this, like, you know, in, in the Middle East, the deserts. No, this is called the Sonoran Desert, the most diverse desert in the world. And um, it's just gorgeous. And so I wanted to walk around and and uh, see the roses and the flowers blooming, the trees are blooming. So I'm still healing and I'm happy to do it. I'm glad that I can, at least when I'm resting, that I have air. <laughs> Thank you for oxygen, really. If we're, if we're alive and we're breathing, we have a lot to be thankful for. Boy, yeah, we really do. So living rent-free in the city. You know, you've got laundromats available right then and there. You know, you just find out an area that you want to stay in with some, with a couple good, really good. This is how you can decide. You want a place in an, in a city where they have a couple really nice parks available. You want some solar panels around, maybe at a park that you can get under the shade because you don't want to be in the sun all the time, right? Or they have good trees that you can park under. So you wanna take time to drive around and see what's available for you that you just haven't discovered yet. Not everybody doesn't know, unless it's a small city, small town, you don't know every little area. You really don't. So um, yeah, explore even your city. Doesn't rent free sound pretty good? If you can live in a small space, if you can go minimalist, if you like the simple life, if you want to get off your shoulders a bunch of junk, a bunch of stuff that you just, you don't even know what you have anymore in your home. You don't even know what's there anymore. You can live a simple minimalist life inside. And I say the minivan is the choice. If you can move around, and even if you do have bad knees, you can do a build out. I don't have a build out in here at all. I sleep on the floor here, this way. My feet are towards the front of my minivan, and my head is here with my pillows, and I sleep on top of a, a really plush sleeping bag. That's my choice. I like hard services, I don't mind. I would rather, even if some days it's like, boy, I wish I had a bigger pad. Um, no, I won't, I won't compromise. And some of you said, well, get yourself a pad that you can fold up. I, where would I put that? No, I don't, I don't want any more things in my van. I really don't want to carry any more things. This folds up nice and I'm willing to compromise that. I like the space. I like to just kind of sit here and enjoy myself sitting on comfort. Now, I do have uh, a video about flooring, and I can leave the link for that if you don't, if you're new and you haven't seen my entire setup. You know, living rent-free in the city is the bomb. I love it. 
I actually do love it. So um, I spend time in Tucson and then I spend time in other areas, higher elevation in the summer in the city. But I still can go camping too. I mean, I can go outside of the city and go find myself some a nature. And I get a lot of nature in the parks. I get a lot of interaction when I go to a restaurant. And it can be as simple as if I have special restaurants, I have special um, waiters and waitresses that I can chit chat with. Sometimes that's just enough, isn't it? If you like, if you love your alone time, that sometimes can be just enough for the day. And then if you go to another place, like you go to the store, go ahead and chit chat with somebody. You know, just don't be afraid. Don't be such an introvert or don't be scared of people. But you can actually say, oh, and when you walk past them, go, oh, that looks nice or whatever is appropriate for you to say. Sometimes that is just enough to make you feel, hey, um, I just interacted with somebody. I got some human contact. Also, in the city, you've got the gyms. Get yourself in shape. Start working out. What else you got to do, right? I mean, if you go out on BLM land, what are you going to do? You're going to sit by your campfire every night and you're going to just kind of sit in your van because, you know, um, you just don't want to be out in the sun all the time, things like that. And I'm not putting that down. Some people love it. So, but that's not for me. And I know there's a lot of people that's not for you either. And I will say, here's, I know I'm going to get in trouble for this one, but being in front of the campfire, night after night, day after day, that smoke gets in your lungs. I don't like it. And then your clothes smell like that. Your hair is, oh, no. I mean, I love a good campfire sometimes. But all the time, no. I mean, it's not good for your lungs. And you know, if you ever notice when you go to move, it's coming right at you. You move, it just, it just starts blowing that way. So, yeah. It's hard to get away from it, isn't it? So... Yeah, living rent-free in the city is a really nice life. You're rent-free, you're living the minimal life. You've got all your stuff off your shoulders. You got rid of it. You gave it away, you sold it, and you got rid of it. And it's not that hard to do to get yourself organized. And that's the reason I mentioned Jack Moore. Within two days of being back in the States, he flew into where his family was, his brother, sister, and then he got online and he checked everything out. And within two days, he, he sent me a picture. And I, I said, well, is this what you're looking at? Because he was keeping me po uh, updated on what was going on. And I said, I go, so I go, is this yours? He goes, yep. <laughs> so within two days, he got himself a really nice minivan. So is this a matter of time? He's going to be back on the road again. I bet like a week. He's got a few things to get situated, but bam. Bam, <laughs> bam. Okay, so living rent-free in the city. I mean, he doesn't want to pay rent. I don't want to pay rent. Once you get started with this, you don't want to pay rent ever again. You are saving so much money. What is the average in the United States rent for a one bedroom? Seriously, the average of even the bigger cities, $2,500 a month. <laughs> yeah, my social security is 1000 <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, how would I afford that? Now, I know some of you say, well, you could go live in a senior um, place. Well, there's waiting lists for that. That sounds fine. I mean, if you can do it, go do it. If you don't want this lifestyle, but if you want the freedom, and I'm telling you, this is a freedom lifestyle because I can change my location wherever I want to. Um, it's not rainbows and unicorns all the time. I mean, obviously, but it's pretty darn cool. And, uh, you know, and, and then another thing, too, is a lot of you have told me that you're in a senior living place and they're paying for most of your rent. There's a lot of predators out there just waiting to pounce on um, old elderly people, seniors. So I'm not, you know, not, not to scare you, but, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty... Um, it's pretty interesting. Now, somebody sent me, I'm going to mention this. Somebody sent me an article about San Diego. There were some people that got together and had a class action suit 
against San Diego because of the harassment they got that when they were living in their vehicles. And a lot of these people, they, they were just parked on the street. They, the, the police towed it away. It cost them thousands of dollars to get it back. Well, it's going to court and they're trying to change the law. And the, the, final, the final decision will be this October coming up. But there is a suit against them and I think they're gonna win to get their money back. And plus, is that they're saying they if they if they're homeless, this is their right. At least they're not on the streets. They're in a vehicle. They should not be harassed because they're living and sleeping in their vehicle. And I think uh, I I think they're going to win. They're going to win because that's the way it's look. I read this article that um, somebody sent me. Thank you for that article too. So yeah. This is going on in San Diego, and this may be across the, across the country. Because what are we supposed, if we can't afford rent, what are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to go sleep under a tree or under a bridge or in, you know, like in Arizona, we have the, um, the washes and, and the, the tunnels, you know, where water can wash through. We're supposed to sleep there? There are people sleeping there, and that looks dangerous to me and dirty. Yeah. So what are we supposed to do? Yeah, um, I, th I think we'll see. But I do think things might be changing. We have every right to be in our vehicle. Oh my gosh, if you think about it, we have every right to be in our vehicle. As long as we're not trashing anything, because that is illegal. Don't trash anything. Get rid of your trash properly. Dump your urine properly. Um, you know, don't be noisy, you know, don't have your boom. Oh, I hate those boom boxes, but I won't even go into that. And that's a whole nother thing, but don't, you know, don't do your boom boxes. Don't, don't try to, um, steal other people's stuff because you know that they might have more than you in, in their vehicle. But I thought things might be changing after reading this article, things might be changing. So there are a lot of nomads that live in San Diego. Who in the world could afford rent in San Diego? Ooh. Yeah, you'd have to have a really good job. I mean, they're going to start paying uh, $20. Somebody mentioned to me, and I said, well, that might be cool. If you're a nomad, just go across the border easily. That way you can always come back to, like, Arizona. But, um, I mean, Quartzsite is pretty close to um, the border of California. If they're going to pay $20 an hour for fast food workers, sounds good to me. You know, just go across there and work. You don't have to pay rent. Well, somebody had mentioned, well, yeah, but that doesn't, um, but gas is like five, five thirty nine 39 or something. So that you don't gain much. Um, in Arizona now it's 408. No, you, you're not going to use that much gas. I don't even, so living in the city, I don't use up that much gas. My gasoline bill isn't any more than at the most $150 living in the city, in the city. Yeah. I mean, if I was going to do traveling, like when I go to my, my new summer home, yeah, I'll spend some in gas, but it's not going to be that much. It'd be, I can get to where I need to go in one tank. Which is like $42 if the gas keeps going up. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, no big deal. So, but when I'm actually in a city and I'm living my life, um, $130 to $150. I spend as much, maybe less, than uh, the locals. Yeah, so I call it urban nestling. You just nestle in with the locals and live your life. Get up in the morning, go to the gym if that's what you want your schedule. Go to go out for breakfast every once in a while, right? Go to the park, hang out, go do some walking, go meet some people in the park, go take in a movie, go pick up what you need, get your water and stuff like that at Walmart or a grocery store. Find yourself a nice place to park at night, and yes, you can do that. I've got videos on that that'll show you how to do that. Um, it's not once it's 
once you get over the fear of it, you're good to go. So yes, living rent, rent free, saving thousands of dollars, thousands, thousands of dollars. Let's say you're saving a thousand dollars a month. You know, that's like $12,000 a year that you can go out to breakfast every once in a while. Listen to me trying to sell this. I'm trying to sell this to you. Actually, no. But if you need to do this, and so many of us do, because our Social Security is so little, or we, we're just tired of looking out our house and looking out our windows at the same tree, the same house across the street, blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? I can change my view lickety split. I just, in fact, I can actually change my view just by <laughs> turning my vehicle around, you know, I'm parking the other way, but yeah. Okay. Well, I want you to all carry on today. Okay. You have a really good day. I'll have more for you tomorrow. I was going to talk about something else also, but I got kind of winded on this one. Um, because I think it's a great subject. It's something we're all going to need to do. But tomorrow will be just a little bit different. So, mwah, I love you guys so much. Yes, I feel better. I'm still healing, though. It's going to take just a little bit of time to get moving and get my strength back. So, but yay, I do feel better. I can breathe, okay? Please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. And... There you go.